Hi there, thanks for joining me and welcome back to the channel. Well, I uh, recently did um, a couple of um, videos where we compared old kits and new kits of the, of the same aircraft. Um, and it was obviously the first one was the Phantom, the Matchbox from 75 versus the, uh, the 2018 Airfix. And then we did the same thing with the, uh, the Wellington Bomber uh, recently, uh, 75 again, versus one from, uh, from Airfix that again was about 20, 2017, 2018. And it was really interesting um, to see the differences and also the similarities. And a lot of people contacted me and said how much they've enjoyed them. So I thought, okay, there's clearly a, a demand to see some of these old kits. And I thought we'd do it again. Now, today something different. So we've got I'm going to go a bit one step further still. We're going to have three generations, not two. We're going to have the 1969 Airfix Harrier, it's the GR1. The 1973, even earlier version of a Matchbox kit from the very first generation with a first generation box, the Harrier HS Mark I as they call it then. And then we're going to have right back up to date with the, uh, the Airfix uh, latest tooling Harrier GR1. Uh, but of the same era, you know, so these are basically all depicting a plane from the same era, era in the Royal Air Force but rapidly jumping across the generations in terms of technology of tooling and obviously the, the latest one is uh, let me see, that's uh, 50 years, 51 years between these two 51 years and then there's, what's that, 40, 48 years? I'm losing, losing track a lot of years, okay? So I think it'd be very interesting to have a look at all three of them. Now, I, 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 I bought this old uh, Airfix. It's an exception because I didn't like Airfix in the day, especially before mid-late 70s. I thought they were fairly awful. Um, they did a good range and they had a great, um, great artwork, great ideas, but they just weren't very good at the execution in terms of the moulding. So I used to avoid them, but I bought this as a bit of a collector's item. So it's the Harrier. I'm going to bring you in. It's a proper Harrier, look at that. Nice artwork. So it shows like a dispersal area typical of what would be seen in like, you know, Germany or somewhere like that. And uh, it's doing a bit of a vertical takeoff in a clearing and uh, you've got, you know, some of the RAF vehicles around. Looks quite good. So, let's have a look inside the box. I'm going to be very gentle on this because it's very, very old, obviously. Uh, I'll look on the side. It's got one or two other options. It's got the... Uh, Got the Bronco, we've got the Avenger, which is the um, dive bomber from World War II and the Americans. They're also offering the Mitsubishi Zero here, and also from Vietnam, coming a bit more up to date for them, uh, the Douglas Sky Raider. So again, really quite a good, quite a good variety of options that they're giving you there. So. Let's have a proper look at it then. I'll be a little bit gentle here. Dealing with something that's quite ancient, like opening the Lost Ark. I'm going to get into that again. <laughs> but first of all, these are our instructions, which are very, very rudimentary, it has to be said. A very, very simple. A little bit of a description about the uh, development of the Harrier from the Kestrel, obviously. And then it goes immediately, you know, it's just one piece of paper, it goes straight into the construction. So you basically build the uh, nozzles with the connection here that uh, helps you operate the swivelling nozzles, which is actually very good for a 69 kit. Um, but, you know, it's got a bit of a functionality there that perhaps you wouldn't, you wouldn't really get on other kits, to be honest, so that's nice. We've got a pilot, so that's also uh, quite nice and it's not a given even in those days. Although it was a bit more common than it is today, I think. Today it seems to have been a lot. Pilot figures seem to have been dropped from a lot of manufacturers. And you've got your air intakes and you've got your actual uh, jet blast nozzles and then you've got your engine intake fan there. So, even shows you how the pivot system for the, the nozzles works here when it's fully assembled. That's what it should really look like. Okay, the other side, we've got the actual construction of the rest of the assembly of the aircraft. So we've got the wings going on. You've got your Aiden gun pods here, part 40. That's going down there. And then you've got your tailplanes, your air brake underneath here, 46. And then some of the other parts. 
actually there's alien gun pods on both sides and then you've got some matter rocket launchers, some bombs or drop tanks, fuel tanks, uh, multiple options for these different single bombs, double bombs or matter rocket launchers there and then it just goes straight into the, the colour call out. Uh, Humbrol of course um, um, and that's it really so it's very very simple it has to be said. Then we've got some decals here they are. Don't think these are going to work too well if we try them today. I think they are so old, well past their best. Let's put it that way. They're very yellow. But they still look, the actual printing looks good. It's just the carrier film that seems to be letting it down, I think. So we'll carefully pop that back. It's got some uh, cover tissue on it that doesn't actually fit. Kind of strange, isn't it? Very, very old. I'm not sure what the deal is there. Anyway. Without further ado, one thing it has got, which I was very impressed by, and isn't mentioned in the instructions, it comes with a standard Airfix stand. Uh, one of the uh, viewers and subscribers, I think, in fact, two of them, I think, have mentioned this, um, saying, "Isn't it a shame that they don't come with these stands anymore?" Now, these Airfix ones were like the uh, the sort of logo from Star Trek. I thought <laughs> so Starfleet Command, you know. Um, but they're actually very good and they're actually quite a sensible little stand for a small kit. Why can't we have those today? Anyway, then we've got, we've got one half of the fuselage and then the other half here. I'm just tempted to start building it right now, you know. But I mustn't because it's a, it's a bit of a classic kit. We don't want to, don't want to ruin it really. You know, the locator points aren't brilliant but it's nicely figured and it's Appearance looks good. It's quite scale light, -like, but it has raised panel line detail, which is a bit nasty. This is very much the typical thing of the era, you know, the panel lines are raised. You know, you've got, you've got here a lot of raised panel detail on the nose. Let's get in a bit closer for you. Yeah, that's a bit nasty, isn't it? Really. Don't know what that was about. <laughs> okay. Anyway, moving on to the sprues. I'll zoom you back out for this. We have got <laughs> this thing that looks like a spanner here. It's actually the uh, like the conrod, connecting rod for the front and rear uh, swiveling nozzles on their internal side. But it's interesting because some of the uh, some of the details are not too bad. I mean, considering this is 1969 we're talking about here, so 51 years ago, you've got the Matra rocket um, noses for the Matra rocket pods. They look nicer than the Matchbox ones, I've got to say. So we've got the back of the bombs with the fins here. And they look quite nice as well. have got your wing. Again, raised panel detail, it's a bit nasty. And then you've got your pylons. And one of the nozzles is here. So that's that sprue. Then we've got a second sprue. The sprues are quite weird, I've got to say, the way they're presented. But have got this one. And then we've got the intake, obviously, here, and various, uh, these are the actual uh, the fins that go behind, blast deflectors for the nozzles, in fact. And then one or two pieces, I'm not sure, the, it's like a, that's part of the nozzle system internally, I think. But then we have the weapons, a whole sprue of them. Just bring you back a little bit. There we go, so we've got some very light sort of drop bombs here, almost Vietnam-like. Can't say I recall these in the Royal Air Force, but I'm not saying that's wrong, I'm not too sure. And we've got the Matter Rockets and the bombs, and then we've got the Aiden Cannon here. And that Aiden Cannon, what was it, 30mm? That packs quite a punch. 3cm shell, you know. There's various parts that are not on sprue, so we've got underwing, part of the underwing there. And we have the cockpit canopy here, which is not, not the clearest or best one you'll ever see, but it's okay. Adequate I'd say, not, not bad, 69 you know, not a bad uh, shape. Then we have another screw, this time we've got parts of the tailplanes obviously, here. We've got the pilot here. The pilot looks quite good, I've got to say. I've seen much worse than that, much more recently than this. 
and then you've got your little wheels retracted, the, t the tail support wheels. Bit of focus trouble. Tail support wheels and then the front nose wheel. And then you've got your main wheels here, and these are the nozzle washers for the, uh, the jet nozzles. And of course, you've got your fan blade here. And then we just have quite a few loose parts in this one, I'm afraid. And um, well, the fun of it though is that we can actually assemble them, can't we? And dry fit them anyway. So we have got a wing, again, raised panel lines. Yeah, we've got a drop tank, for two, and they go something like this. There we go, drop tanks, and there's various bits that just seem to have fallen off. I don't think they've been cut. Off. I don't know if I've genuinely fallen off. So we've got uh, the jet nozzles here, another one there, small one, the back nozzle, small one. And then we've got the uh, intakes again there. And we've got the back plate for the intake for the Pegasus jet engine. And then uh, just one or two bits that seem to drop off, bunch of bombs and things we won't worry about. Oh, there's actually another tissue here. That's interesting. Does that fit the actual decals? Yes. So we, for some reason we have two. <laughs> got a feeling there's two kits that got mixed up. That does fit. That does fit the decals. So that's the right tissue. I think the one just been. That's no good. And then we have your complaint form. If you want to complain, you've got damaged parts or missing parts. Send it off to Holday in Place in London to FX's headquarters in 1969. And that's where you can a uh, little bit of an advert on the back. <laughs> oh, yeah, and we've got the uh, the air brake as well. I missed. That's the air brake from underneath. So, quite a, a bit of a trip down memory lane there. It's quite nice, isn't it? It's a shame that there's so many parts off the sprue, but I think that you get that at this age anyway. I don't think that anybody's pulled them off. I think they're just dropped off. I don't think that they're, they're the strongest connection points. I'll gently put them back. And we will move on to the 70s. It's like Back to the Future, isn't it? Here we go. Try and get everything in place without any damage. There we go. There we go. <laughs> it, is, it is quite nostalgic looking at this stuff, I've got to say. It's quite a bit fun. There we go. Harrier instructions, construction kit. 1969. Airfix's first attempt at the Harrier, and there we have it. So, we'll put that one to one side. Bear in mind what we've seen. Raised panel lines, um, fairly good um, figuring, the sort of uh, scaling of it and the shape of it looks quite good. It's just the panel lines that let it down, but other than that, it looks alright. Then, now we're getting a bit more sexy now, it's the 1970s. Time for some colour and some drama. So, here we have another one of uh, Roy Huxley's lovely uh, artworks, and it says on the front, Harrier, the world's first vertical short takeoff landing strike aircraft in the RAF No. 3 Squadron, rises from a West German dispersal forest near Wildenrath, 1972. On the side we have an advert for all the other lovely planes that, that Matchbox had uh, done in their first issue in the Purple Range. So we've got the uh, Mikoi MiG-29, we've got Hellcat, we've got the Nat, the Red Arrows, and we've got the Mirage 3C. At the end we've got another bit of the artwork. And on the side, and this is the original, original box. This is the way that they first appeared Matchbox kits. No window box, they were a lift-off lid, as you will see. And we have a representation which is extremely accurate of the way that the model will look when you've finished it, if you don't paint it. Because no painting is necessary. So, let's have a look inside. I think you quite enjoy the, the box design. It's, it's something I really used to like. You lift it off, the lid comes off, and then on the side we've got more interesting items to look at. We've got a depiction of the display stand, which of course we just talked about. 
which was very, very common in the 70s, 60s and 70s, but now you don't seem to get any more. Shows how it all goes together. At the end, we've got this really nice um, uh, small parts painting guide. Now, later, of course, they added this to the instructions, but in the early days, they used to put it on the end of the box, which is really nice. Then a little bit of international blurb, and then finally, it's another painting guide. I think we've just duplicated it. Pretty much duplicated at either end, but not in the same sequence I've noticed, that's quite interesting, they've done it a different way up. It's not actually identical, interestingly. Anyway, what's in the box then? Here we go. So, starts off with the lovely little Matchbox, M for Matchbox model stand, which is late lamented and very, very much uh, appreciated by most of us, I'm sure. Then we've got your canopy, and it's still on its sprue, which is quite impressive. It's very impressive you can see it. There we go, still on the sprue. And then we have the sprues themselves now. It's an interesting, interesting choice of colours, Matchbox. I've gone for this. Uh, I think. The best colour to describe it is dog dirt, to be honest. This is dog dirt brown, which is not a very nice colour, I have to say. Um, but very striking. Um, perhaps we'll call it chocolate brown, just to be civil about it, isn't it? So you've got uh, recessed panel lines. Now this is a big jump between the two models. So you can see already we've got a, a leap in the way that it's been approached. Proper recessed panel lines here. And here. Right the way across the model. All recessed. No raised. Is as it should be, of course. And then we've got Pilot here. Pilot doesn't look as good as the Airfix one, from us. That's one, one area where it's a bit lacking. Main gear, nose. Here are those Matra rockets, which I complained about. Matchbox used this same mould for every kit that had Matra rockets, and they never ever looked that great, I have to say. Let's just get it a little bit closer. No, they just don't look real, do they? Not correct. Anyway, then you've got your intakes, which are open in this case, and do look a bit more realistic, I think, than the, uh, than the Airfix. And then you've got your nose wheel. And you've got a couple of washers here that are the, uh, for the nozzles. Um, now, this doesn't come with the Aiden cannons for some reason on this particular variant. It has these skids underneath instead. So, that's a difference. We've got... see you back a bit. We've got the instructions, which come in this lovely, very colourful, and looks like it was printed yesterday. Absolutely fantastic. This is the purple range, so they always came in purple. But you'll get a lot of these that look a bit discoloured, or they're in black and white only. This is the original, genuine purple range, complete with hot hints how to paint things. How to cut things off the sprue, how to glue them, etc. We've got some decals popping out here. Um, a little bit dull looking, but I bet you that those will actually work okay. Pretty sure he put those in water. In fact, I, I built one of these about five years ago. And I painted it as well, and the decals were absolutely fine. So, I suspect they still work. Kind of rudimentary. And of course this kit comes as the... It says the Mark 1 Harrier, but the actual option, which it doesn't say on the front of the box, it's also the AV-8A Harrier for the United States Marines Service. So that's, uh, if you're in the USA, this is probably a big big selling point for this kit, actually. And uh, still makes it attractive today, I think. Because the US Marine Corps ran the AV-8s for many, many years, and I think they still even have some. Anyway, so we've got our instructions. Very simple, rudimentary stuff. It's just a very big seat, which I don't think is necessarily to scale or accurate here. And it doesn't look like right, does it? It's like a couch. It's almost like a, I don't know. Some sort of a uh, some sort of a lazy boy chair, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then we've got the two sides of the fuselage. Uh, it tells you what where to cut out the little slots and holes. If you're going to have the stand, for example, and then you produce uh, the nozzles. That's the first thing. Getting all the nozzles aligned, getting your pilot in, and then you move on to uh, gluing the two halves together. Then. Your intakes and your canopy go on, front, front and rear nose cone and the rear cone at the back, which covers the parachute. P 
pitot head at the front as well. Then your tail planes go up, and then your wings come on, and your skids, the aforementioned skids. And then finally, and this is very typical of the matchbox layout of instructions, finally we have the sort of final weapons assembly loadouts and your wheels going on. Now I have to say, actually, when you think about this, that the rationale of the order of build on this is really uh, very, very sensible. And uh, some of you may have seen the uh, Tornado GR4 in 30 second scale I reviewed recently, brand new from Italeri. Nice kit, but stupidly overpriced. But anyway, I'm, I'm sure that'll correct itself because people won't buy it and then it'll drop. But um, a nice kit. Um, but one thing that was annoying on it uh, and is, is not untypical these days is that the instructions build sequence would have you building up, sticking your front nose wheel on, I think it was um, in the instruction manual, it's something like stage four, absolutely crackers, you know, you're going to knock that off. And it wanted you to put the wheels on, the tyres on, on stage five, I think it was. Crazy. And this, this old 70, 73 matchbox kit recognises that all those little fiddly bits need to go on at the end. You don't want to put them on at the beginning or middle of the assembly process. That's just crazy. Anyway, moving on. Let's have a dig out what we have further down in here. Now, now we really have got some chocolate. OK, we can't call it chocolate. This is chocolate. Yeah. You can see here, we've got the wings, which are actually in one piece, which is quite nice in a way. And the tail planes are in one piece. You've got your matter rockets here. You've got your uh, stabiliser wheels for the end of the wing here. Here's your nozzles for the jet blast. Very similar to the airfix, you've got the washers. You've got your uh, uh, fan blade for your Pegasus engine. And you've got some general cluster bombs, I think they are. Pylons, optional retracted wheels for the wing here. And then your tail planes here. And it looks really nice. I say it's re recessed panel line, so that's it's a step forward this compared to the airfix. You can see a an evolution in thinking about how to produce the kit to make it look more realistic. Now I've actually produced one of these, and as I say, it was about five years ago, and I get, I didn't get crazy in it. I just made it fairly simple, but I did a decent paint job. It. it looks it looks nice. I've got a Hasegawa, and I've got one of these. And this one looks the better of the two, which says it all really. It went together like a dream. It looks better, the sort of figuring and the panel lines look better. It says it all. They were always great kits, these matchbox. Always nice, you know. Um, just not sure about that seat. But anyway, I won't go on that. But if you see, this kit has got everything on the sprue. There's nothing missing. It's absolute perfection. And it's in a Mark I original box, which makes it quite rare. So I've actually got two of them in the same condition. And I chose this one because it had the nice uh, looking instructions and box, a bit more colourful. So we just simply pop those away, make sure they're okay. And we'll pop that back in there, like so. I'll tell you what, I think I might be better doing this differently. It might be sensible. Put that on the bottom. That in there like so. Like that. There we are. And the lid goes back on. Now what a nice little dinky model that is. I remember when this came out I was absolutely made up with it. It cost about 35 pence back in 73 and I had one and then I had another one some months later. We all bought with pocket money you know. Um, nice scale, nice rep representation. Felt chunky and detailed and lots of good weapons on it. Just a smashing little model. That. Absolutely brilliant. That was my personal choice. But hey, yeah, that was, you know, what, 40, 48 years ago, whatever it is. 48 years. Let's come back to the future. Something from the present day. Now then. Here we have aircraft of the same era. But look at this, we're going to see that the way it's done today. So Airfix updated this with their production from India. Nice artwork, which they often do now. We've got choice of two... So, sorry, I didn't actually mention that, did I? Um, sorry, let's just go back to Matchbox. Slight error here. I completely forgot to mention that underneath 
the actual kit. We talked about the American option and it's there because they actually used to have the uh, the options of uh, the colour call outs and markings shown underneath. Sorry about this, it's just a memory failed me. So here we go. You've got your RAF 3 Squadron as mentioned and here's the American Marines AV-8A which is the uh, Marine Corps VMA 513 and it does look quite quite kicking and of course it has this different area and it has like a, a sharp aerial behind the canopy cockpit area so it's quite different in the way that it appears because of their radio system is different to ours so there you go definitely worth considering that's a really really nice kick